Mirrors are a very large part of our everyday lives. If it wasn't for mirrors, we'd all have quite a hard time making sure we look okay before leaving the house for work or for school. They provide us with an unfiltered image of whatever is being presented in front of it. It's just glass painted with a reflective paint. Right? If that's the case, why do so many people, including myself, feel unsettled by mirrors? Are we afraid of what we'll see or what we can't see? Many of those who claim to be afraid of mirrors, those who suffer from esiotrophobia, many times claim that it isn't the mirror, but the reflection. So let's dive into this a little bit. There are three main, what I'll call, sub-fears when it comes to mirrors. The first example is that of the own person's reflection or their body image. Those who fear mirrors because of this reason have generally been known to suffer from some type of body dysmorphia. Put simply, this is when the individual's mind has one image of themselves in their head that differs from what the reality is. For example, someone who is suffering from extreme anorexia would look into a mirror and see themselves as overweight or out of shape. In reality, they're allowing their disease to cloud their mind and in turn their judgment about what's being represented in the mirror, which as we said, only reflects what's being put in front of it. With that said, however, it is quite an extreme example. Others, like myself if we're being honest, just have a hard time looking in the mirror because we're aware of how we look and we just don't want to look at it. Again, a mirror can only represent what is placed in front of it. This is why people who feel the fear in this sense will just go about avoiding them but don't mind having them around. This leads directly into our next sub-fear. If someone isn't afraid of what they'll see in the mirror, they may fear what the mirror projects back at them. They're more afraid of the reflection. In a sense, reflections are distortions of our own reality. Therefore, when something is placed in front of a mirror, it's effectively distorted. This would give an individual a feeling of incomprehension while staring at what is being presented. This particular sub-fear was, in a way, the plot behind the movie Mirrors. The opening scene of the film is a man running through a parking garage. When he makes it into a bathroom, he begins apologizing to the mirror and is crying, begging to be set free. The mirror breaks, and the man picks up a large shard of glass. When he looks up at the mirror, the reflection, which is now a being in and of itself, causes him to commit suicide. The rest of the movie has scenes very similar to this one and follows the protagonists as they try to cover up every reflective surface in their house. Another great example of fear through distortions is in the music video for Eminem's Not Afraid single. He sees his reflection in a car window and looks on concerned, as it isn't what he was expecting to see. Soon after that, there is a scene of him running through a maze of mirrors while suffering the same delusion. A fear of this kind can be attributed to some kind of disassociative disorder. Reflections of text are said to make individuals feel unsettled as well. Similar to what we've talked about with face distortion, backwards or distorted text can make someone feel misinformed and in turn cause them to feel lost. If you feel you fall into this category, then you may want to skip out what I'm about to talk about, but if not, keep listening. There is something you can do with a mirror. Some consider it a game, others consider it a way to get in contact with the other side or invite something in. In the middle of the night, head to your bathroom or any room with a large mirror. Turn off all the lights and light a candle or have a very low wattage bulb. The point is to have extremely dim lighting. Stand in front of the mirror and look directly into your reflection's eyes. In just a few moments, you'll notice your features morphing into something you can no longer recognize. My wife and I tried it some time ago, and I'll just say that both of us had trouble getting to bed later that night. Finally, we have the type of sub-fear that a majority would attribute this overall fear to. The paranormal. There are tons of creepy stories out there relating to mirrors, as well as many superstitions. On top of that, mirrors are common in some rituals as well. 
The belief that breaking a mirror led to seven years of bad luck comes from the Romans. They believe life renewed every seven years, and therefore breaking a mirror would shatter your soul. Luckily, there are supposed ways to keep the bad luck at bay. Slaves believed in grinding it into a fine dust or burying it would do the trick. This was so the mirror could no longer reflect anything. When it comes to rituals, mirrors can be used to view another realm or another person. This is known as scrying. Many believe mirrors, even those unaffected by rituals, are a doorway to another world. One similar to ours, only slightly different. Some believe it's a portal to the spirit world, and ghosts are even legend to live inside of them. This is very prevalent in Jewish religion. When someone in a Jewish household passes away, the mirrors are covered up for a week, so the soul of the deceased doesn't get trapped inside. Other cultures go as far as to cover them while they sleep so their soul doesn't find its way in. And then of course, there's the legend of Bloody Mary. There have been many incarnations of the ritual and arguments raised of who Mary actually was. Some believe it was a model who was obsessed with her looks and was brutally murdered sometime in the 50s. Some believe it to be the ghost of an ancient witch who was known to kidnap small children and take them back to her cabin in the woods. Despite what story you've heard, there is an immense chance that you've heard someone claim that they've done the ritual themselves. Of course, there's no real way to prove this, so you have to go on their word alone. I'm no different. I personally am far too superstitious to try the ritual myself, however, I've heard two separate stories from close friends. The first one I heard was when I was in elementary school. My friend claimed her best friend, who was no longer around, did the ritual and came running out of the bathroom with large scratches on her face. Looking back, it was probably a bunch of hoopla. The other story, however, was a bit more scary. According to this friend, his dad was the one who did the ritual. The mirror he did the ritual was one that could be hung up on the wall, not in the bathroom. He claimed he saw Mary and immediately turned the lights on. From that day forward, he didn't think anything about it. A few years down the road, he has the mirror in his room and begins having terrible nightmares and episodes of sleep paralysis involving some type of black figure in the mirror. When he tells his mom, my friend's grandmother, she supposedly took the mirror outside and smashed it. From that day forward, he had no nightmares and no episodes of sleep paralysis. So let's finally answer the question posed by the title of this video. Why are mirrors creepy? Why do they creep us out? There isn't one answer, really. We've seen multiple examples here as to why. Mirrors are scary because they show us what they don't want us to see. They reflect whatever you put in front of them and force you to face the reality. On the other hand though, maybe it's simply distorting your perception. In that case, mirrors would be scary because they're not showing you what is being put in front of them. Finally, we have the idea that there isn't just a reflection in there, but rather something that looks like us and could be us just simply in a different form. Furthermore, there could be someone or something living inside of the mirror, something we have no control over as humans, something sinister. Then again, I'm sure it's nothing, right? So as I was writing this video, I passed the question off to you guys. Do you think mirrors are creepy? And I got a good amount of responses, a few I wanted to touch on here at the end of the video. Firstly, we have Lisa Bunny, who says, Nope, I believe they're both in inanimate and soulful. If they are needed for other entities to travel, I'm fine with that. I'm not superstitious at all. We all need to share our space at times. And I like the way you come at that, Lisa, I really do. Because I do believe I'm extremely superstitious, as I said in the video. And I believe that there could be something, I, I personally think mirrors could be used as a way to uh, travel to other places or to have spirits travel to other places. So it's interesting to me how you think um, 
that they can be used that way, but it doesn't freak you out. I think that's really cool. Now, Stacy Devine brings up another really good point, something else that we brought up in the video. She says, I think they're pretty, apart from if someone passes away, then you have to have a home wake, then cover them up. So this goes into the Jewish belief that if uh, someone passes away, you have to cover the mirrors for a week. Um, so the soul does not get trapped inside. I didn't know that anyone uh, in my audience would follow that belief, but I think it's really awesome that we have somebody who does. I think that's really interesting as well, because like I said, I personally believe that spirits can absolutely travel through mirrors and that they can be used as a portal in a way. So it's really, it's a really interesting concept. Now I want to talk about some of the people who said, yes, they are afraid of mirrors because while the vote was majority no, a lot of the comments were majority yes, which I think is interesting. Um, our first yes comes from Atomic X Squad. She says, at night, I feel like I'm going to see something behind me. Now, a lot of people brought this up, and most of that is probably from horror movies. You know, people, like, they close the medicine cabinet, and then there's someone standing behind them. Things like that would absolutely freak somebody out. And I can see where you're coming from. But you also have to think, um, the actual chances of that happening are extremely slim. Um, if at all, you know what I mean? But I, I, I kind of get that fear as well. If I'm staring at a mirror for too long, I feel like something is going to appear in front of me or behind me. You know, it's, it's a pretty strange feeling. And that leads directly into the next yes from a uh, creepy pasta Rob. And I actually agreed with him on this because he says yes, but only at night. Or if I stare into one for too long, as it seems unnatural. And that's exactly how I feel. I can look in the mirror for, you know, maybe 10, 15 seconds, but at a certain point, I get that feeling that I'm not looking at myself, but rather something else or someone else. It's a strange disconnect, and I feel like if I stare too long, uh, whatever's on the other side of that mirror is going to become too real for me to comprehend, and something really bad is going to happen. I don't know, it's really, it's really weird. I, I, I don't think I'm afraid of mirrors. But I'm afraid of what is inside of them. Uh, Metal Bear makes up another really good point. Usually at night, she says she's afraid of the dark. And for some reason, I feel like someone's staring at me from inside the glass. Um, this, I also totally understand. It's... I, I think this is a combination of a fear of not the dark, but a fear of what's in the dark. Because, you know, in the dark, you're obviously you're unable to see anything, so you don't know... What could be around the corner? What could be hanging out in the bathroom? Uh, I mean, when you're in the bathroom, that is one of your most vulnerable places to be, if you know what I'm saying. So, the idea that you're afraid of something that is inside the mirror that is looking out at you, I don't think it's that far-fetched. For the simple fact, as I said, you're extremely vulnerable when you're in the bathroom. You know, if you're doing your makeup, you're taking a dump, or whatever. Uh, you're extremely vulnerable because your back could be turned to it. You could be looking straight at it. But if you're using the bathroom, you can't really do much about it. It's a scary thought that there's something inside of it looking back at you. Jenny Lee made a really good point. She said she is afraid of mirrors, but only the older ones. This would make a lot of sense if we go back to the ritual part of why mirrors scare people. Because, you know, back in the day, witchcraft and dark magic were a much, much bigger thing than it is now. So it would make a lot of sense as to why someone would be afraid of possibly a cursed mirror in a sense, you know, like one of those huge mirrors that you hang up on the wall or it uh, has a stand with like the dragon claw feet on it or whatever, things like that. And I think that's what she was getting at. Um, she says, it fe I feel they may have seen something bad and horrific. And that makes a lot of sense as well. Because if you've seen a lot of ghost hunting shows, you know you've heard people talk about residual hauntings. And a residual haunting is basically just being played on loop forever and ever and ever. So imagine a mirror seeing something happen, and then it just continues to play that through over and over again. One night in the middle of the night, you're in the bathroom, you're doing your business, and then all of a sudden it decides to play that uh, play that event 
through the mirror and you hear like a voice in the background or you hear uh, somebody running through your house and you get freaked out. Stuff like that. It's terrifying to think about. Uh, Malik Bostic, I just want to say I'm sorry that you have to go through this. He says he's he is indeed afraid of mirrors because he has a nightmare quite often of a demonic version of myself that comes out of the mirror and locks me in it and torment and kill the ones I care about. That's terrifying. And it goes into a lot of the beliefs about mirrors, that there is something in there on the other side, that when you're looking into a mirror, you're rather uh, looking at something that is a replica of you, but different in some way, most of the time believed to be an evil version of you. So I can totally see where that uh, nightmare is coming from, but I hope to God that you don't have to suffer through that any longer. Hopefully your mind will be nice to you from this point forward and be like, you know what, maybe, maybe we shouldn't portray mirrors in a horrible way in his dreams. I don't know. Uh, but that is absolutely terrifying. I am sorry you have to go through that. Fernanda Mathers, um, she has a really creepy story to go along with why she believes, or not why she believes, but why she's afraid of mirrors. Um, she says, when I shower sometimes, the mirror gets foggy. Baby footprints and sometimes words, but they're misspelled. I get literal goosebumps reading that comment. That is absolutely insanely terrifying. Um, when I was younger... Probably probably early teens, maybe mid-teens. Um, I was at a friend's house taking a shower. And he came in there when I didn't know. And he wrote something on the mirror. And when I got out, I saw it. And I freaked out. And it was all, you know, haha, funny, whatever. Because I figured out he had done it. But if I lived alone or I was here alone. Like earlier today, this morning, I took a shower. And there was no one else in the house. I could not imagine what I would do if I got out the shower. And there were words on my mirror knowing that I was the only one there. And baby footprints? Huh, what the hell? I mean, that kind of goes back to... I don't remember whose comment it was. It goes back to that belief that mirrors can capture tragic events. Maybe that mirror saw something happen to a child. And it's trying to portray it. Who knows? I also want to take this time to thank everyone who has recently bought me a coffee. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, you can go down to the top description in the video. You can go down... Let me try that again. I also want to thank everyone who has recently bought me a coffee. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, check out the link in the top of the description, and it will take you to my Ko-Fi page. Ko-Fi is a donation service where you can buy me a coffee, which is a $3 um, donation. It really helps out, and you get your name shouted out there. <laughs> It really helps out, and you get your name shouted out at the end of a video. So here we go. Here are the most recent coffees that you guys have bought me. First, we have Michelle, who bought me 12 bucks worth of coffees. Thank you so much, Michelle. You said smooth voice. I love it. This is for you, Michelle. Thanks, Michelle, so much. I really appreciate you. Next, we have an anonymous coffee. Thank you so much. They didn't leave a message, but thank you. I appreciate you. Then we have Lynn Wright who says, love your narrations. Thank you so much, Lynn Wright, for the coffee. I got plenty of more narrations on the way. Then we have someone who just typed E as their name. They bought me three coffees, and they titled it coffee slash beer. Thank you so much, E. I really appreciate that. I will absolutely give me some coffee and some beer, and I'll drink one for you. Thanks, man. And finally, we have someone by the name of Rainy Day who bought me $21 worth of coffee. That's incredible. You really didn't have to do that, but I appreciate it to the utmost degree. Thank you so much, Rainy Day, and all you said was enjoy the coffee. Thank you so much. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Thank you, everyone who's bought me a coffee, and thank you, everyone who will buy me a coffee in the future. It really helps out, and you get your name shouted out in the end of the video, so, I mean, you know, you get a little something out of it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to drop a like and subscribe with notifications on because I put videos out about three to five days a week. If you're interested in supporting the channel, go down below into the description and check out links for my Ko-Fi page as well as my Patreon page. 
but that'll do it for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to stay strange, stay safe, and good night.